So this is a microwave oven transformer and you see various projects kicking around on the internet and I thought I'd do my top 10 microwave oven transformer projects. They kind of divide into two parts. There's the low voltage stuff which to be honest is no worries whatsoever. And then it's the high voltage stuff which is the bit that's been killing people. So once again, if you've never done any of this before, don't do it! If you want to do it, practice on something that is low voltage first and get used to those safety skills so that you can approach the high voltage stuff in safety without danger. Anyway, they split into two, high voltage and low voltage. When you look at these things, then they've got this two coils. There's one thick wire, one thin wire. The thick wire stuff plugs into the mains, the thin wire stuff is a bit that fires your magnetron. The thick wire stuff you see used an awful lot for number one on my list, and that is the electromagnet. In the electromagnet, you basically cut through that weld line, cut through that weld line, grinder, hacksaw, something like that will do it. When you've done that, the whole bit will lift off. You can then take the coils out. That's the bit that plugs into the mains. There's the other bit there. Force that out, keep that bit in. You've done that, you'll end with an e ship like that, with the thick wire in there, and some bare metal sitting there. All you have to do is connect your supply, and it needs to be a DC supply, so connecting a battery to it will be just as good. Connect your supply, and you'll have an electromagnet. Number two in my low voltage side stuff is the arc welder. You can actually make an arc welder or a spot welder out of these quite simply by keeping that thick side, wrapping a couple of turns of extremely thick wire. You'll get about a volt or so, but you get a lot of amps. You get so much amps and heat that you can actually weld with it. So you can spot weld with it or you can arc weld with it. It's very cool actually. So they are my next one. Number three is you can use exactly that property and put two carbon rods on the end of it, and those carbon rods will glow. They will give out an intensely bright light so you can make an arc light out of it. You can use that very same property, but put it inside a refractory brick. If you put it into a refractory brick, the heat in there is enough to melt metal, so you can make a furnace out of it. Using that same idea as the arc light arc light furnace and welder you can make a hot stapler out of it if you put a piece of metal in between those two it will act like a fuse that metal will get incredibly hot if you press that metal into a bit of plastic it will melt into the plastic the plastic will cool over the top and it will hold the plastic together a hot plastic stapler. another project i like with these things are they're a power supply you can make a battery charger out of them because they're a transformer, these are actually step-up transformers that take, in England, 240 volts in, 2,000 volts out. If we remove that thin one, leaving the thick one, then we've got 240 volts that we would put in to get about 2,000 volts out. It's roughly 10 to 1. If we swap that around and put 24 turns on that, roughly, then we'll be able to get 10 volts out. So we put 240 volts in, 10 volts out. What we want to do is put enough turns on there so that we get 12 volts out. And the way you do that is just wind the turns and keep measuring the voltage till you get 12 volts out and you'll have a 12 volt transformer. That 12 volts can then be put through a bit of rectification and a bit of DC ripple and you will get yourself a battery charger out of that. The cool stuff I like about this actually, remember there are two coils in there, thick, thin. If I pass a magnet over there, it will generate a voltage. Now I can choose which voltage I generate. If I leave the thin one in and wave a magnet over there, I'll get four or five volts out. If I leave the thick one in and wave a magnet over there, I'll get about half a volt out. I'll get more amps, but less volts. In this one, we get less volts and more amps because it's a, sorry, more volts, less amps because it's a thin wire. If I take six of those, put them into a ring, arrange some magnets in there and spin that, it's a generator. Now, of course, generators and motors are electrically identical machines, they're just the opposite. So if I can make a generator out of this, I can equally make a motor out of it. So if I take this coil and pass a DC current, of course it becomes a magnet. If I put a magnet in there, it will repel that magnet, and that magnet's on a rotor and I swap that 
uh, polarity of that voltage, then it will continue to, to turn and we get ourselves a motor. So the last two ideas I've said to the end, not because I think they're the best, but because they involve the high voltage. And the high voltage is the one that's killing people. So again, if you've never done it, don't do it. If you do it and you want to learn about it, do care and diligence. Remember your safety with this stuff, high voltage kills. Anyway, first one in high voltage is the really popular one all over the web and that is fractal wood burning. You can directly connect to these things across a bit of salty water that's painted on some wood and you get some pretty patterns out of it and it's become a popular hobby for people. Uh, <laughs> and they are really beautiful but they do need care and attention and they're very easy to do. You just plug it in, attach your wires and it will burn into the wood. And the last one is a Jacob's Ladder. A Jacob's Ladder is that um, electrical device that you see in Frankenstein's lab and every mad scientist has got to have one and if you haven't got one, well you ought to turn in your pass. It creates an arc and the arc travels across two wires giving a great noise and a brilliant light show. It's dead easy to do, you need a couple of things. They connect them up together, start the arc and that arc will travel up two coat hanger wires or two bits of copper. The Jacob's Ladders and um, Fractal Burning are the most dangerous things you can do with them but they are also quite pretty and quite exciting. Anyway, I thought I'd run through the top 10 things of things to do with a microwave oven transformer because people seem to collect loads of them. I know I do. I, I think they, um, they just replicate overnight. If I leave the little boy transformers and little girl transformers together, they have a party at night. And I come back and I have 10 transformers instead of the three that I left. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.